This is A's Cast Live, your comprehensive look at the Oakland Athletics. Rooker, it's a fly ball to deep center. Robert going back at the track. He will turn and watch it fly. And 29 other MLB clubs. Adonis Garcia sends on the other way. That sends Carroll back. He's at the line. Stone in a truly historic season. Oh, yeah. What an absolute nuke out to left field. It's Glaber Day. And like a good Glaber, Torres is there. Join us as we take you inside the baseball universe. From humidors to stuff plus <laughs> to walk off dingers, we have you covered. Spend your afternoon with us only on A's Cast Live. Here's Chris Townsend. We are actually on a little bit early today as Ross Stripling is able to uh, stop by because you are the one guy. And by the way, this is A's Cast Live. This is a show that you can watch YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. They call it X now. You can listen to it on A's Cast. We developed this so it's like a functioning radio slash TV show that operates 365. Ace Sweet. Cast runs throughout the entire year. So welcome to Ace Cast for the first time. The reason why I say that is you were the one guy. We were there spring training. I know we saw you, but you were the one guy we didn't get. Literally the one guy? Yeah, you were it. Well, and here I am making you start early. Sorry to all the uh, <laughs> viewers. I, I said, let's launch. God, uh, he is a pain in the ass. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the tough guy, man. Sorry. No, yeah, surprised. Normally I'm, uh, I'm ready and available. Yeah, you did a lot of backfield stuff while we were there. But uh, it's great to have you because... We were really excited when you got signed, you and Wood, because, you know, the one thing that this team really needed and why this team kind of got off to such a bad start last year was you didn't have any veteran pitching right out of the gate. You're what the doctor ordered. I know it wasn't exactly probably the way you wanted to depart San Francisco, but coming to Oakland, I mean, this seems like a perfect fit. Yeah, I mean, it, it really does. I remember uh, talking to Jay to what you were saying. I was talking to JP Sears earlier, and he said at one point he was the most tenured member of the staff. Think about that. <laughs> yeah, you know, which is a, <laughs> a crazy statement considering he has maybe a year of service right now. Yeah. Um, man, it really does. It, it feels like an awesome fit. I've really enjoyed spring training. Uh, it's really fun to come in and fill a role as a leader that I've never been. Uh, the the kind of thing I've said off and on a lot is I used to follow Kershaw around like a puppy dog and probably still would if I was in L.A., uh, even my ninth year in just because um, that's kind of, you know, I've always had great veterans to kind of lean on. And now all of a sudden me and Woody are those guys over here. But it's been a really fun role for me to um, kind of every time I sit down, have guys sitting next to me to eat lunch and picking my brain about uh, what it's like to pitch in the big leagues, how to stay in the big leagues, uh, even simple things like uh, what is Mookie Betts like or, you know, whatever. Just kind of uh, fun to be the guy that I've noticed people start to lean on to ask questions and try and give some veteran leadership is just uh, that's that's a brand new role for me. Yeah, it's such a it's such a different transition in a career where all of a sudden it had to hit you at some point where you're like, wow, I am that guy because you never really probably thought you'd be that guy. You now are that guy. Yeah, it uh, it really is amazing. I mean, nine years flies by. It, it really does. Um, you know, I'm definitely trying to impart wisdom on these kids as much as I can, but also still feel like I'm figuring things out uh, to this day as well. So it, it's it's been really fun. I'm definitely enjoying it, but also, um, you know, looking forward to continuing my career and, and, and trying to learn new things here in year nine myself. So it's kind of like a perfect mix of, of helping these guys, but also learning stuff from new coaches and new guys getting their hands on me for the first time. So it's, it's, it's been, a, been a really good balance so far. This has been a place for a long time for guys to come here and get back to what they want to be. Cause I know you're not happy with last year and this is a great opportunity for you to show everybody again, who you really are. How much did that mean to you that you're getting that opportunity here? Yeah. My first meeting with Cots, he said, um, you know, strip, you're not coming over here to reinvent yourself. You're coming to reestablish yourself, yeah. which I thought was a really cool thing to say. Um, I mean, this is a great place to pitch, obviously. Um, you know, this, this is one of the most pitcher-friendly parks out there. I give up plenty of fly balls, um, you know, so hopefully they can stay in the yard. Uh, I thought that about Oracle as well, but that didn't, it wasn't exactly how it panned out for me last year. Um, you know, I'm just uh, and looking forward to a fresh start, and I've really liked working with Emo and, and Hub so far and, and just kind of um, getting their hands on me as far as kind of what they see as my strengths. And, and I think you can always implement new things and the one, you know, that I'm sure we'll get into that's been the story of the spring is this death ball, a gyro ball. The old death ball. <laughs> the old death ball. 
Um, you know, but that was kind of coming from the Giants coaches into the off season where I really worked on it. And then you get here and our analytical guys plus pitching coaches have their thoughts on it, when to use it, how to implement it. And, um, you know, you cannot, you can always get too much information, but now in my ninth year, I'm able to kind of take all that in, ex assess it myself and go implement it. And I think, um, so far it's been a good mix of, of, um, you know, kind of trying to figure it out here as we head into the season. Do you remember Daisuke with the Red Sox? Of course, yeah. Yeah, he was the original gyro, gyro ball. Yeah, I remember thinking, I mean, I would have been maybe like middle school, high school yeah. for that. I remember thinking, like, what the heck is this thing? And we now, all were uh, like, yeah. what, what does that mean? What's yeah. it doing? Well, and that would have been before, you know, what's funny is that would have been before analytics, before TrackMan. That would, that would have just been him or a coach saying, what year was Daisuke at the rest? Uh, Daisuke Matsuzaga. What, what year was he with the Red? When did he first come to the Red Sox? Uh, 2000. It was like the mid 2000s. Yeah. Yeah. Let me look. Uh, yeah, I mean, I graduated high school in 08, so that, that sounds about right. I, you know, I just think like what what were they doing to call it a gyro back then? Versus now, we know because it's like a track man stat that you can. Ooh, my bad. Yeah, no, you're right. Oh, uh, seven by the way. Oh, seven. seven. Yeah. So. You know, now it's like a thing you can say, like, oh, that's gyro spin or that's bullet spin or that's zero zero movement versus whatever he was throwing. I don't even know what they were just, I think, trying to think of a funky word for it. And they came up with gyro. Well, Boston Globe ran with it. Next, yeah. you know, it was great. But, um, you know, when I th when I think about this season and you you getting ready for this season, I try and tell people all the time because we've gotten kind of into this world of positionless pitching staff. We want to be like, you can do anything. Well, some days you can start. Some day you really... And I'm like, starters have routines. Starters have routines in between starts. How nice is it to get back to what you like to do routine-wise and know you're going every five days? It's really, really nice. It really is. Um, you know, as a, as a man that had my 200th appearance in the big leagues, I'll say a, man, a player, that had 200 appearances in the big leagues last year, 100 starts, 100 relief appearances. I've done the back and forth thing a million times. I think it's an extremely valuable role. Uh, I think teams value it. I think it's uh, an awesome job to have in the big leagues. I just think the two best stretches of my career were when I had some real runway to start, 2018 and 2022. And to answer your question, it's because you can, for one, you can get into the routine for sure. You can really like listen to your body, get it ready every fifth day. But two, you just kind of like, we're able to settle in and be like, okay, I know that if this is, if I struggle this outing, I'm going to get the ball again in fifth in five days yeah. and get a chance to go after it again and um, and really prep for a lineup and 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 you know it just I just think the peace of mind of it goes a long way and and I'll always believe that that's a valuable role to have a a, a couple swingmen or, or long guys that can come in and bridge a short start to the back end of the bullpen. But if you're talking about me and my arsenal and how I pitch, I just will always think that. I suit better as a starter and someone that can, you know, hopefully get through three times and just because I throw anything in any count. So I got to think that the third time through, whether the stats back it up or not, third time through, the hitter should really have no better idea of what's coming than he did the first time he saw me because I can just kind of throw anything to you in any count. And I just, I, I, I that's what I believe is my strength. And when in doubt, you got a death ball. Hey, yeah, <laughs> death ball. Mix it in. We'll see. We'll see. It got a little ahead of ourselves here. Uh, it had an okay spring, not an elite spring. We'll see what it how it looks here to start the season. Okay, so obviously our job is always to look at the players, and you know we're we're going to start out positive. But the last two seasons have been brutal, and last year when he only went fifty games, it was awful. But being down to spring training, knowing the roster, seeing some of these guys at the end of the last year. Having watched these guys, you know, we've watched Lawrence Butler grow up. We've now gotten to know Daryl Hernandez. They're seeing these young guys, you know, grow in front of us. When you showed up, you tell me about the athleticism. You tell me about the athletes. You tell me about these young – what do you see in this roster? Man, the pieces are there. I've, I've really compared it to a young Blue Jay team that I joined in 2020. I got traded over there, and that was like the rookie years of Bichette, Biggio, Guerrero – Etc. And, you know, a team that you saw like come up together and grow together. They're yeah. really close. Um, even part of the staff grew, like came up together with them. And this feels like that. It just feels like guys that have played together since they were drafted. I know a lot of them came over from Atlanta or New York in trades, but even those guys are close. And now they're meshing with guys that have been drafted and developed from the A's and they're all here and they're ready to make their name as Oakland A's on, on Major League Baseball. And, and, um, it's it's honestly I, I think the pieces are there i think cots had a really good first interview that said or sorry first um, meeting with the guys that kind of said what you said like last year sucked but we're moving forward 
Um, we expect to win every time we come to the field. And, you know, you look back at the Astros, it didn't happen overnight. The Orioles, it didn't happen overnight. You have to draft, draft you have to develop. But this is the group that we're choosing to do it around, and you guys are going to be the pieces that for the next time the A's make the playoffs, you guys are going to be those guys. And I thought what the message was awesome. And I think it's true because I think you look around, the talent is there. Uh, we need to stay healthy. Obviously, every team does. But I think we have a chance to be competitive. How many games we'll win, I'm not sure. But I, I don't see us ever just like rolling over and taking L's. I think we're going to bring it every day and be in a lot of ball games. Well, we truly appreciate the time. We don't want to keep you too long, but – Want to have you on a lot. Love having veteran pitchers on. It's very refreshing. You yeah. know, guys that have been, you've been there, done that. You've had a, set, a successful career, and we expect big things. I mean, I've been saying it. I need 30 starts, man. I need 200 innings. It's what all you guys should strive for. Yeah, agreed. I've never done it. You know, I think the most innings I've thrown in the big leagues is like 130. So I'm looking forward to this Right, but you want yeah. 200 innings. Yeah, man. I've always asked. Yeah, I mean. This is put my money where my mouth is. I've always asked for this opportunity, and I hope I can take it and run with it. So let's uh, let's hope we're talking in six months from now with 200 innings behind, under my belt. Hey, great to have you on the Thank program. You. We want Appreciate to have it. you on a lot this year, and good luck it. in 2024. Thank you. Appreciate it. We're starting the season off the right way. Coming up next, we're actually going to bring a, a hometown boy back, the Giants pitching coach, Brian Price, is going to join us right here on A's Cast Live. Hey, Oakland A's fans, join your team this spring in Mesa. With nonstop flights direct from Oakland, there's never been a better time to head to the Southwest. Surrounded by this stunning Sonoran Desert, spring training fans know why Arizona is the perfect spring break escape. Miles of trails, shoreline, and sunshine combine for an unforgettable Arizona adventure. There's simply no shortage of things to do, see, and discover in Mesa. Get your visitor's guide at visitmesa.com. This is the place where you can dance like nobody's watching. Win like nobody's business. And get away like you mean it. So what are you waiting for? Come join the party. Take that evening out and make it a night you'll never forget. This kind of action can't be beat. This is Chris Towns, and there are two things that are a must for me, comfort and style. Whether I'm playing golf, going to dinner, I've got to have the right feel. That's why I've partnered with Link Soul, and you're going to love Link Soul. They have just released their new spring line, new fabrics for their polos, lightweight and perfect for technical performance. Link Soul also has new styles for their layers and hoodies with cool prints and seasonal colors. You know what they say in the big leagues, look good, play good. Go to LinkSoul.com. That's LinkSoul.com. If you're looking for a new mattress, Nest Bedding has you covered. Sleep on the same mattress Hall of Famer Ricky Henderson sleeps on. Nest Bedding is the number one brand of online mattresses and the Bay Area's favorite mattress store. Take home the Easy Breather Pillow. The New York Times calls it their number one pick. You can navigate their easy news website, nestbedding.com. That's nestbedding.com. Green and Gold fans, use the coupon code Oakland and you get 10% off your entire order. Nest Bedding, love where you sleep. This is Chris Townsend, and if you're looking for a great place to eat and watch games, go see my friends at the Chicken Pie Shop at Walnut Creek. The Chicken Pie Shop is one of the hottest restaurants in Walnut Creek. You're not going to find a better menu and come try their world-famous chicken pie that has been served in Southern California for 86 years. Spacious indoor and outdoor dining, perfect for your next private party or corporate event. Don't forget free parking. For more information, go to chickenpieshopwc.com. That's chickenpieshopwc.com. Nestled in the hills of San Jose, minutes from Silicon Valley, Cinnabar Hills Golf Club offers 27 holes of championship golf, a first-class pro shop, practice facility, and great food in the grill. This time of year also means family and business get-togethers. Let the folks at Cinnabar Hills make your event unforgettable while enjoying their award-winning venue. It's all there for you, championship golf, a great space for any events, and incredible food. See it all at CinnabarHills.com. That's CinnabarHills.com. And the underdogs, Oakland Athletics, win their first championship since they were in Philadelphia in 1930. Hi, I'm Raleigh Fingers, Hall of Famer, three-time World Series champion with the Oakland A's, and World Series MVP. Winning takes teamwork, skill, and heart. So when you need an ace for a personal injury lawyer that will win you the game, go with the winning team. Call Venardi Zarata at 833-VZ for me or go to vzlawfirm.com. Bernardi Serrata, the official injury law firm of the Oakland A's. A's
Broadcast Live continues from Ricky Henderson Field. Here's Chris Townsend. Well, we always love to bring hometown guys back to the Bay, and he's officially back. I mean, now the pitching coach for Bob Melvin and the San Francisco Giants. It's got to be great, Brian Price, to be back home. Oh, it's fantastic. I just drove into Mill Valley uh, earlier this morning to kind of look around and see where I'll be living and uh, and get in the lay of the land there and spend some time in the city cruising through the marina and uh, couldn't be happier to have the orange and black on and work with Bob Melvin and the Giants. I mean, you and Bob, and I, we've known this, and I've known this for a long time, you know, Bob, all those years, and God, I did the Bob Melvin show the whole time. We We would talk about you. Uh, you guys have such a close relationship. Just how great is it to be back with him again? You know, it's fantastic. We had talked about it. You know, our last year together, really, on the field together was 2009. And uh, the last two years, the previous two years uh, in San Diego, I was just able to go and help out a little bit where I could, which was very little. <laughs> but it was fun because we were able to do spring training together and I could pop into San Diego each month and it was fun. But not, nothing like working side by side, being in the dugout. Um, our back and forth banter is, is wonderful. It's not hiking in Sedona anymore. It's back to the grind and working hard together. Okay, now there's off days, so I'm thinking some <laughs> some climbs on uh, Mount Tam is gonna are gonna replace what we did in Sedona for sure. But to be with the guy who's a lifelong friend, right? You're both cow bears, the whole thing. I mean, it's 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 not often you get to have that opportunity in a career. It's not. I mean, who could have ever expected that Bob would get a chance to manage the Giants after 11 years with the A's and having played with the Giants? And then for me, who grew up a, just a nut about the organization and all the great players and someone that followed the team and got up and read the Chronicle every morning and followed the stats to actually have a chance to kind of basically come out of retirement and, and get back on the field and finish up with the Giants. It's, it's special for both of us. It's not lost on us. Now, obviously, things didn't go well in San Francisco last year, and it was just different. We don't need to pile on what happened with, 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 with their philosophies, but you needed to come in and change and overhaul a philosophy and to change how you handle the pitching staff. What has that been like this spring? Well, you know what? I didn't look at it quite like that. I just kind of looked at it as I, I think the organization wanted to reconnect with uh, the value of starters, five starters taking the ball every each taking the ball every fifth day and starting to work on getting more length and more value out of the starting pitcher. Uh, and that benefits everybody. It benefits the bullpen, the longevity of the bullpen and the ability to stay sharp and, and healthy through through the course of an entire season. It's hard to manage a larger group of openers and, and, yeah. and players going back and forth. Uh, and I think actually for, for some teams, it, it can be very advantageous. Uh, I think here with the Giants, I think we have the players capable of holding down the rotation. We have guys coming back that will be able to su support us as we get into the season and increase our depth. So there's a lot of good things that are happening. I think that, that we're ripe for getting back to a little bit more traditional look to the pitching staff. So during the season, I'll do some TV work over at NBC with Dave Stewart. And you want to talk about a guy who's like, it just drives him nuts when I'm like, Dave, I'm just hoping for 30 starts, 200 innings. He's like, what? But that's, you know, even getting someone to 200 innings now. is So the philosophy, we understand, guys, are not as pitching as much. They're not going as deep in the game. Can we get somewhat of that back? What are realistic goals? Just not for the Giants, but for you just think for all these organizations, because I think we're all there's one thing we're starving for is that's innings from our starters. Yeah, you know, I think part of it is I think there's a watchability factor. I think fans lock in. You know, you may make your decision on what game to go to as a fan based on who's going to start it for the home team or the visiting team. And I think we've lost that predictability and knowing who's going to be the starter, who's going to pitch the bulk of the innings. And I think we lose some of our fan base that way. I think I think that you, we want to know, you know, if you Bumgarner's throwing or Lynch comes throwing or Dave Stewart's throwing or Bob Welch or Vita Blue, you know, John Montefusco, you want to be at the ballpark for those games. The count. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so there's there I was dating myself yeah. <laughs> right there. But those are the things a lot Google of Google it yeah. to our younger fans. <laughs> a lot, I'll throw an Ed Halicki out there too. So but those are the those are the that maybe the reason that you're going to the game is to watch Marichal make a start. So those are all yeah. those are all great things. And I also think that it, it 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 for me personally is I think it it from a strategy standpoint 
creating pitchers that are able to take on the innings workload. And that starts from the time we sign them and how we build them into the organization or how we sign them as free agents to be able to do that. Cause we're not going to be able to go from where we were last year to where we want to be in a year. We we're going to be cautious with Hicks and, and with Harrison and with the guys that are in yeah. our rotation, it's Keaton Wynn and some of these guys, we, we can't just jump them from a hundred innings to 200 innings, even if they're performing well, we have to do it responsibly, but we have to plant the seed to expect to throw more pitches and more innings in these starts. And then we'll use our practical minds on, on when enough is enough. Snell seems like a steal. I mean, obviously Cy Young award winner. Um, just what was it like the reaction when you hear Blake Snell is going to be a giant? And then when do you think you can really get him going? Well, he's already, he's, he pitched uh, yesterday in a simulated game type of a scenario down at Papago our spring training facility. And uh, we're going to play it, outing by outing so we don't know we haven't targeted a, a date for his first big league outing and i'm not going to get in trouble by suggesting that there is one that's set uh but what we want to do is get him ready responsibly so when he's ready to take the ball he's he, he's capable of going out and throwing the five plus innings and the requisite number of pitches to be able to accomplish that so we'll see where it goes but he came in shape uh, and we think that that he will certainly be pitching for us before too long. Yeah, you wake up one morning, all of a sudden you got the National League Cy Young Award winner. <laughs> it's 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 easy to become a great pitching yeah. coach <laughs> based on late signings right before opening day. So I I got a lot better in a hurry. Yeah, you got well, you became way better coach. Well, I, I, we appreciate the time. We'd like to do this again throughout the season. I know I talked to Bob when uh, you guys were coming over. Super excited and. Uh, Thank you for the opportunity. And like we said, we like Bay Area guys. We like to bring you on the program. We know there's a lot of people that probably were around two years ago have a chance to see this at some point during the season. So thanks for the time and good luck to you guys. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. We got more coming up next right here on A's Cast Live. Hey, Oakland A's fans, join your team this spring in Mesa. With nonstop flights direct from Oakland, there's never been a better time to head to the Southwest. Surrounded by this stunning Sonoran Desert, spring training fans know why Arizona is the perfect spring break escape. Miles of trails, shoreline, and sunshine combine for an unforgettable Arizona adventure. There's simply no shortage of things to do, see, and discover in Mesa. Get your visitor's guide at visitmesa.com. Nestled in the hills of San Jose, minutes from Silicon Valley, Cinnabar Hills Golf Club offers 27 holes of championship golf, first-class pro shop, practice facility, and great food in the grill. This time of year also means family and business get-togethers. Let the folks at Cinnabar Hills make your event unforgettable while enjoying their award-winning venue. It's all there for you, championship golf, a great space for any events, and incredible food. See it all at CinnabarHills.com. That's CinnabarHills.com. This is the place where you can dance like nobody's watching, win like nobody's business, and get away like you mean it. So what are you waiting for? Come join the party, take that evening out, and make it a night you'll never forget. This kind of action can't be beat. This is Chris Towns, and there are two things that are a must for me, comfort and style. Whether I'm playing golf, going to dinner, I've got to have the right feel. That's why I've partnered with Link Soul, and you're going to love Link Soul. They have just released their new spring line, new fabrics for their polos, lightweight and perfect for technical performance. Link Soul also has new styles for their layers and hoodies with cool prints and seasonal colors. You know what they say in the big leagues, look good, play good. Go to LinkSoul.com. That's LinkSoul.com. If you're looking for a new mattress, Nest Bedding has you covered. Sleep on the same mattress Hall of Famer Ricky Henderson sleeps on. Nest Bedding is the number one brand of online mattresses and the Bay Area's favorite mattress store. Take home the Easy Breather Pillow. The New York Times calls it their number one pick. You can navigate their easy news website, nestbedding.com. That's nestbedding.com. Green and Gold fans, use the coupon code Oakland and you get 10% off your entire order. Nest Bedding, love where you sleep. If you're looking for a great place to eat and watch games, go see our friends at the Chicken Pie Shop of Walnut Creek. The Chicken Pie Shop is one of the hottest restaurants in Walnut Creek. You're not going to find a better menu and come try the world-famous chicken pie that has been served in Southern California for 86 years. Spacious indoor and outdoor dining, perfect for your next private party or corporate event. 
Don't forget free parking. For more information, go to chickenpieshopwc.com. That's chickenpieshopwc.com. Nick Allen joined Towney on A's Cast Live and discussed the conversation he had with his teammates regarding 2024. Rooker came uh, to, I mean, Geloff and uh, and I a little bit, I mean, last year, but he was just like, we can't do this again. You know, we got to find a way to really work our, you know, tails off to get better and put us in a better position. And then, you know, Zach and I always talk about, we were like, sink or swim, especially in our division, you know, so we got to find a way to make it happen else you know it doesn't happen so that's just our i think that's hopefully our going to be our motto but we just got to obviously take it day by day and just keep getting better you can watch the full interview at youtube.com slash athletics or listen at athletics.com slash a's cast And the underdogs, Oakland Athletics, win their first championship since they were in Philadelphia in 1930. Hi, I'm Raleigh Fingers, Hall of Famer, three-time World Series champion with the Oakland A's and World Series MVP. Winning takes teamwork, skill, and heart. So when you need an ace for a personal injury lawyer that will win you the game, go with the winning team. Call Venardi Zarata at 833-VZ for me or go to vzlawfirm.com. Bernardi Serrata, the official injury law firm of the Oakland A's. If you're looking for the latest green and gold gear for the 2023 season, then look no further than athletics.com slash shop for your officially licensed gear. That's athletics.com slash shop. You're listening to A's Cast Live. Here's Chris Townsend. Well, we'll, we'll take you behind the scenes here. That's not how we were planning on starting the show. Our first official show of the 2024 season. It's just Ross was ready to go early. So we started the show early and then Brian Price showed up and away we go. Here we are 2024. It's great to be back at the Coliseum. The sun is out. It's going to be a beautiful night here. A little bit chilly, but for the weather that we've been having and all the rain, it is going to be a good night and it's great to see everybody. It's, it's been a long time since we've been here at the Coliseum. It's great. We've been out spring training. We've been to Nashville at the winter meetings as you know, we always promise we'll keep you covered throughout the off season, but it's good to be back home. It's good to be at the, at the Coliseum and get ready and to see all the players and players are excited. And we've been talking to some guys about some moves and, who is going to be here, and the announcements haven't been made, but we've got an idea of what the roster is going to be like. We can't actually say right now. We'll wait for Mark Kotze in the front office to announce it, but I think a lot of people are going to be excited. Are going to be excited. I, I'm, uh, I'm kind of pumped for this season, and I can tell you this, that win total number, I know talking gambling right now is not the greatest no. because of Shohei Otani, <laughs> but uh, – People are starting to like it. People are starting to a little more belief in the athletics before we start the season. Of course, today is the first game of the Bay Bridge series. Going to play here, and then you can uh, listen to the game here on A's Cast tomorrow, 5 o'clock. Correct. Yeah, yeah 5 o'clock. We'll be on at 3? Three? 3, yes. Okay. We're going to have a uh, you know, forward promotion. We'll have Bill Moriarty talk about A's prospects, and we're going to have our good friend, we're playing the Giants. You know who we're going to have on. Our good friend from NBC Sports Bay Area, the World Series champion, George Contos. Oh, Contos is yeah. going to be on. I mean, he's our guy. I mean, he's our Giants insider. Well, if we ever oh, need someone from the George Giants. George Contos. Uh, by the way, I guess it has been put out about one of the guys, and we're going to have him on a little later today. Um, Dale Hernandez has made the roster. He will be 22 years old in 238 days on opening day, making him the youngest player on an A's opening day roster since Brett Anderson in 2010. One of my all-time favorites. From Mike Selleck of, uh, um, Ace, of Ace Communications. So, just to let you know who's on the show today, we've already had Brian Price, pitching coach of the Giants, former Cal Bear. Great to have him on. Uh, Brian Price, obviously super tight with Bob Melvin, and got to talk to Bob. We saw Bob earlier today uh, in the house. Ross Stripling. Uh, we're going to have Ginny Kavanaugh on, who we, we decided to do her today. 
and she's going to be coming up here. You want to switch her to five? I don't know what her commitments are, but it's going to be easier to do her today than opening yes. day because that's obviously going to be a big day for her. So take the pressure off there. And then Daryl Hernandez. And we taped this earlier. So he told us earlier yeah, we that do. he had made it. We were going to pretend like we don't know. We don't know. But I can just tell you this. How special these moments are that he was told by Mark Kotze he was going to make the roster. He then came down to the field. This is not in our interview because, once again, when we did the interview, he told us he was going to be on the team, but we had to act like we didn't know. He had about 30 minutes to himself where he said he just cried. And it tells you everything you need to know what the, the, these times are like in Major League Baseball for 30 different teams as you have young men that are getting to live out their dreams. And they're being told today, tomorrow, notifying family, wives, brothers and sisters, girlfriends. It's a real special time. You've worked your entire life to get to this point. It's your dream. Daryl Hernandez's dream has been to be a Major League Baseball player. And he told us that's that's all he's ever thought about, working out, getting ready, just wanted to be a Major League Baseball And that dream is now here. And we talk about Oakland being the land of opportunity. And it truly is. Because who knows, if, if he does not get traded for Cole Irvin, if he's a Baltimore Oriole right now with everything that they got going in the Orioles organization, who knows where he starts out? Who knows? Is he in double A? Is he in triple A? We've talked about it with so many guys, you know, like Boyle. Where would Boyle be right now if he was with the Reds? Is he triple A? Is he at the big league? I, I don't know. But you come here in Oakland and you're getting the opportunity of a lifetime. And it's huge for these guys. And I'm so happy for Hernays because Hernays, what we have learned, good chance that he is only a part of the now solution, but also a big part of the future. Yeah, and I'm glad to see he's here. He's going to be the youngest player in 12, 14 years to be on the opening day roster. He's had a great spring. And you're right about the Orioles. I mean, he unfortunately probably be in double or AAA because they got, you know, guys like Henderson and – um, they have another middle infielder I'm blanking on right now. Um, that's pretty good. And then they have Jackson holiday coming. So him getting traded here for Cole Irvin was a, a huge thing. And now he's going to get a chance to compete not only for playing time at third base, but he's going to play some shortstop too. Nick Allen can't play. I mean, I'd love to see him play every game because Marcus Simeon is one of the guys who played every game, but we'll see if Nick Allen can play every game, but you're going to need a backup shortstop and he's the guy right now, but we haven't seen the full roster on who's going to make it. There's some other very interesting candidates, but I'm very happy for Daryl. Super nice kid. I'm, I'm happy he's on the roster. Well, we told you, you know, they're not going to rush to let Ms. Diaz back. And if Les Ms. Diaz was not available, you only had one guy on the roster who could play shortstop. That's Nick Allen. Nobody else on the roster had played shortstop other than we talked about uh, Ruiz, but Correct. he hasn't played in a long time. Uh, he had to make the roster. So the flexibility that you now have defensively, for Mark Kotze and the ability to have somebody who can play short, play third. the at, We've been talking about it all throughout our shows on spring training, the versatility that this team has and the athleticism is far better than we've seen in years. Yeah, this, ro mean, this roster is a better roster. Yeah, and, and it's great for the the way the game's going now with the excitement with the stolen bases. we got guys like Butler and Gallup, guys that can run. You know, we've joked about Shay Langoliers being a, a guy that could be a. Well, I joked about him being a 2020 guy. Maybe, maybe one of these days, maybe one of these years, we'll finally see it. But uh, I love the athleticism, and that's the way the game's kind of going. If you look at a lot of the younger teams in baseball, they're very athletic and fair, and they have a lot of speed on their team. My power still there, but I'm excited for a lot of these guys, and we're going to see it starting tonight. But we'll see it for sure on Thursday against Cleveland. Hard to believe. I know the baseball gods. Stephen Vogt getting a job in the big leagues as a manager. Then, of course, his first big league assignment as a manager is here at the Coliseum, where the greatest moments of his career from his final at bat till it, 
uh, his playoff game winning hit against Detroit in the ALDS. I just the baseball gods, the way they work, the fact that Stephen Vogt will open up as a manager of the Guardians here at the Coliseum is something very special. We got to get into just some some stuff that we found out. I mean, the the Athletics have made a trade. I mean, unfortunately, probably the the, the biggest Miguel Andujar are going to start the season on the IL. They picked him up. We know Billy O, assistant general manager. Just love the acquisition, thinking that, you know, maybe he's ready to return to that form where he did have a monster year for the Yankees in 2018. And he went, you went, well, I mean, let's just see. Well, he went out in spring training. Yeah. And raped. Five, absolutely raped. 357, five home runs, 15 runs batted in, and 42 at bats in spring training. And then hurts his knee, and now he's going to start on the IL. And all of a sudden, the this issue of six outfielders, and you're wondering, well, I mean, really going to take six? Is there going to be an odd man out? That's why Hernandez had to be on the team. So that means you'd only have five infielders. Somebody else has to play short. But now that all changes. So with with him being on the IL, now you probably can carry just five outfielders. Now you can carry one more infielder if that's you want to have Toro on the team however you want to work it. But injuries right before the start of the season are definitely changing the shape of and the look of the roster. Yeah, here's just some of the guys that are injured going into the start of the season. Uh, Luis Medina, we knew about his knee. Aletmus Diaz. Scott Alexander has the rib. Uh, Angel, uh, Angel Felipe has the has Tommy John. Trevor got Tommy John. We know about meniscus for Andujar. Freddie Tarnock has the hip. Sean Newcomb, who was going to be a, le- a left-handed reliever in the bullpen, has a what is it a left he has left knee irritation so there's some of the guys that have some injuries so now we're still trying to see who's going to be some of the bullpen guys that fill out the rest of the the A's bullpen going into it because we know who the starters are and we know who most of the guys are but there's a couple guys battling for spots in that bullpen that we'll hopefully hopefully find out by tomorrow after the game uh, who's going to be on this 40 or 26 man roster to start the year someone like Mitch Spence someone I would bet Mitch Spence is going to make this team. Kyle Muller, he's another guy. We're trying to see if, what he does. He's out of options that we've talked about all spring. So, I mean, there's there are some guys that were. were I, I would just bet Mitch Spence makes this team. Yeah, I think that's a, a fair assumption. He's pitched well in spring. Well, he's got to make the guy. team. Yeah, he's roll five, or he, he goes back to the Yanks. Because let me tell you something. The New York Yankees, if you offer him back to the Yankees and the issues that they're having right now, you, you don't think they go, yeah, we'll take him back? Uh, he probably he probably is in their rotation to start the year if if one that you the know, Yankees would take him back right now. I think there I think there's no way that you can lose Mitch Spence at this point. Yeah, you need him. You need the depth. There's a reason you went out and got him in the Rule Five. So there, I think he will be on the roster. Yeah, and I think that's a he's like I said he pitched well in spring. I mean, there's a lot of guys. I mean, the guy that's had the best spring out of anyone that and he's a position player. Hoy Park is hitting like what he end up hitting in like 500 spring. It was like yeah, it was cool. He ended up hitting. He ended up hitting yeah 500 in spring. That's incredible. So we'll see if he's a guy, but he and he's a guy that can play everywhere. Are you thinking he makes the roster? Hoy Park. With the, some of the injuries, maybe. No, but I'm going to go probably not. No, maybe he probably starts in AAA then. Yeah. And he gives you a lot of depth. He can play a lot of different positions. But at least there's good things to be talking about right now. We have, yeah. like, there, there's, like, there's been battles, you know. I'm pretty sure uh, Lawrence Butler is going to make the roster. I can pretty much assure you that. Um, there's nothing I'm reporting. I just think that there's no way. After two springs like this, Lawrence Butler is going to be on this team. This team's going to be exciting. I can't wait. And, and the start will be so key. If you get out to a start where you're competitive and you start winning some games, boy, that can just propel you into something. I'm not saying the greatest year. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try and sell you that. But what led to 50 wins last year was a horrific start. Yes, it just was loss after loss after loss, and it was just doom and it was awful. You don't start like that, and you start out competitive, and you start getting some good mojo. And you got some pitching. Next thing you know, you're a far more competitive club with a lot of young guys who are flat. You've got veteran guys looking to reestablish themselves, as Ross Stripling said. And you got a lot of young guys 
looking to prove themselves. Yeah, and I love the comparison that Ross made. He said it's a lot. He reminds it a lot like the Blue Jays team he played on with the young Vladdy, young Biggio, young Bichette. Uh, and that's high praise because that team is, you know, they play pretty well. They haven't won a World Series, but they've been, those guys have grown together. And that's kind of what we want to see here. We always see waves of A's guys coming up, growing together. The Olsen, Chapman, Simeon days. Now we're trying to see it with Geloff and Noda and Hernays and, and Butler. And maybe, hopefully, they're Don't the forget next. JJ Blade. Blade, yeah. Yeah. And you had the even the wave before that with uh, Giambi and the big three. You have a mixture of players, of some veteran guys. And some guys that when we look at the primes of 26, 27, 28, and then some really young guys. You've got the the three tiers that I like for a well-built roster. You actually have all three. When you start looking at some of the pitchers as veteran guys, some of your position player guys. I mean, because you got to look. Guy like a Ryan Noda and J.J. Blade, they're entering their primes. Yeah. Nick Allen entering their primes. Establishing, establishing themselves at that age when you should start to take off. And then you got the youngsters who don't know any better, and they're super talented. Yeah, and I'll throw this out there. I, I did some research. I was just looking, and, uh, you know, because we don't dabble into a lot of fantasy baseball, but I Ryan Dota, apparently big fantasy sleeper for a lot of people this year. Because what does he do? He gets on base. He gets on base. They projected him to hit over 20 homers, get on base. So he's a fantasy sleeper later in the draft. I'm not saying take him in the first five rounds, but later in the draft when you get to the rounds like 20 and up, you got to look at a first base if you need a guy to be a backup for sure. Well, I don't remember when I said it, but I stick by it. You wait and see how high the on base percentage is. If he adds the power to it, we already know how good he is defensively. Ryan Ode is a guy that you could see in the All Star game this year, and I have no idea where the All Star game is. Texas. They got it? Yeah. Wow. Oh, well, I mean, brand new ballpark. Arlington is it? You're gonna go for the World Series? You had the World Series of the All Star Game. Okay, cool. They are rolling in it right now. Before we bring Jenny on quickly, so why Langford starting the All Star Game in Texas for the Rangers? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I listened to our guy Bowden Duquette yesterday on the GM show. Why? And they why? are why? all over him. They love him and Evan Carter. Du- well, Duke Evan Carter, Carter and Evan Carter can play. Yeah, and he I made, mean, he's made his debut against us. I mean. Bowden was pretty much saying he thinks that Langford, pretty, he's, the way I took it, Langford was the best player in the draft last year, better than. What Paul. about Seeger and Simeon? Those two guys are still pretty decent. Yeah, they are nice. Well, Seeger's hurt. What about, well, it doesn't matter. He's still going to yeah. play. Young at third base. Yeah. Low at could first. Have been, low at first is pretty good. Well, he both, low's hurt, but yeah. Young could have been the could have been the rookie of the year. Yeah. And uh, don't forget they have a guy that's pretty good in the outfield in uh, Adolis Garcia. Where's that TV star? Where's the TV star? Where is she? Where is we'll, she? We'll, we'll do transition. Well, yeah. Get Cody off and bring the TV star. She's. Uh, we're going to be like her warm up. Yeah, that's you. Unless we hired somebody else, you're the you're the big cheese now. Hello. How are you? How's it going? Welcome back to Ace Cast Live. Hey, gr- glad to be here. As big listener. As you'll know, first time caller. Yeah. Well, second time. I've already, I've already done your show once. So you'll start to notice whenever you come on, we're always near the dugout yeah. or the spring training here. Yeah. We always got pretty good digs, good it's, setup. It's not bad. You got to watch yourself during BP around these parts, though. Throws <laughs> can come in out of nowhere. <laughs> like, that, that's why. Do you, you need a batting? Helmet. No, that's why they put me here. So it's like, if I get hit, they don't care. We can't have you get it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I got it. So I'm the sac- it. I'm the sacrificial lamb. I, I, I'll be the one that gets drilled. I got some good views. Well, here we go. Here we go. Let's roll. Well, one, one tune up, right? This is like, this is that day where you're like, everyone's excited to be back at the ballpark, but you're like, nah, it's still exhibition baseball. One more game. Yeah. You, Getting you, closer. You didn't get to have your full spring training game. <laughs> Just throw right in the fire. Uh, high rain in Arizona that doesn't yeah. really come up ever. Lightning, thunder and lightning. Yeah, thunder, lightning, a little power outage, quick spurt on the video board. But, you know, today... Feeling pretty good about getting this one in. Yeah, you're going to get this one in. But I think it's good, though, that you do kind of go through it. You have to. It's spring training for everybody, right? I mean, that's the old adage around these parts, whether it's uh, for the security guards here even. you got to get back into your rhythm. Our, pa- right? our passes normally, they the don't, things don't work. They don't work. <laughs> they never work. It's fine. Oh, we know you. Come on in. Yeah, they weren't working today, so I guess, I guess they got to fix that by Thursday, huh? So all the hoopla, well-deserved, no doubt about it. We talked about that last time you were on. 
Now you've had time just to yeah. kind of sit and get ready. What has that been like from, I mean, you're, what was it? Good morning, America. You were on oh, today's show, today's show, whatever national, but <laughs> all the stuff. And you had a lot of articles written about you and it's historic and everything. Now it's time to get yeah. the job going. What's that been like? I do the job. I'm very excited for it. Um, I think, yeah, it's been a whirlwind of a month for sure uh, between, you know, the announcement and hearing from so many great people and then, you know, doing kind of the media tour uh, that went with it and, and just like getting to spring training and getting to know an entire new team of people. And that's hard in and of itself, you know, just a, a historical knowledge of this team, trying to have a background of how things went last year. You know, you kind of keep up around baseball. Uh, you know, I, I work for MLB Network Radio, so I'm up to date with all the teams, but you're not following it every day and not following the patterns of how, how a player did last year and what they're working on and what they, you know, went to, to work on in the off season and how they accomplished that coming into spring training and all those things. So just kind of gathering those files on every single player. And then for me, the biggest step is really building the relationships and getting in the clubhouse, having conversations with guys, getting to know them as people and human beings. Cause I think that tells a lot about kind of uh, who they become as baseball players. And so for me, that's a huge part of my process. And I didn't get as much time as I would have liked at spring training to do that, but you know, enough to scratch the surface as we get into this season, like the build is coming. And I know that, and I think I'm excited for that. Just as players know in April, your, your batting average isn't going to be what it is in September, right? It's, it's a little bit of a progression throughout the course of a season and you have to trust the process. So I'm kind of in that moment, but, um, very anxious to get going. You know, I just, I want the games to come. I want the flow to come of, of a year. And so we're going to get that fast and furious starting on Thursday. Well, when I'm watching NBC sports, California this year, you d you really don't need to reference last year. We can just let that, <laughs> just we could just let that it. just go down the river and go away and never come back. Oof. I think you'll be okay. Yeah. Well, I think you didn't miss much though. not being here. No, last year. But here's the deal. And, and here's what I've gathered. And I know you do this and you talk to players every single day. So you've probably gathered the same exact thing, but as bad as those stats were, they were very important stats for some of those players because it's your beginnings. It's your experience. It's your book. It's how you start. It's your foundation. And really for, for a lot of these guys being so young, um, coming into the big leagues can be a daunting task, right? You're on these chartered airplanes for the first time. You're going to all these ballparks. You're trying to find your way around. You're trying to really understand what your routine should be because you have everything handed to you now. It's not the minor league grind that it was. All of a sudden now you have all these things at your disposal. How do you use them? What's best for you to use every day? So, so you're going through this fact-finding mission while also trying to put up huge numbers and and trying to prove that you belong in the big leagues that's out of the way for a lot of these guys there's no more proving there's this confidence and this air about him where like I, I know how to be a big leaguer now and I'm coming into the year that way and I'm confident and you can tell like they're looking around the clubhouse too going not only am I confident in myself like I'm confident in that guy because I saw him play last year and I saw his improvements this year at spring training so I think that as you know much as you want to throw it to the wind and say goodbye to 2023 it was an important year if this build is going to be what it's supposed to be around these young guys thing that I feel a lot better about and we talked a lot about it in the post game show we didn't get too much into it in this show is just the reality is the last two years we weren't as young as you think our roster are a lot older players. Well, yeah. Oh, if you look and at the it, opening it, day roster last year, it's like night what? and day from yeah. how things ended. So, sure. like you said at the very end, we started seeing that. And what I'm happy is that we're now to know that Hernandez is going to be on the roster. Yeah, I believe Lawrence Butler is going to be here. To know that these young, we're finally going to say, all right, young guys, we're going to allow you to be you and grow. And Hernandez told us, I want to. As someone who's been around the game, I mean, what this means to you, when Hernandez found out, and we're doing the interview, we, we didn't know it was going to get announced, but he told us he came out here and cried for half hour. Oh, right? I just, there's Isn't nothing. Isn't that what it's all about? There's nothing like that feeling. I love this time of year. And, you know, I've seen Kate kind of go around and have different conversations, doing some handshakes with different players. Um, don't know if those were the, you've made the team conversations or not, but I love it because the emotions of that moment, it's its one word, you've made it. You're going to be on an opening day roster. That is a huge deal to a player and a milestone in their major league career. And to be making your major league debut and all those feelings that come along with it, knowing you're going to do it on you know, one of the most um, pomp and circumstance exciting days of baseball, which is opening day, there has to be no greater feeling. And I'm sure the emotions, like just to have the tears and sit in a dugout of a major league 
field where you find out. How cool is that? Um, we're watching videos all around the league of, of different guys making a squad and managers telling them. But as exciting as it is, imagine the heartbreak on the other side for Mark Kotze. He's going to have to make those decisions, as are 29 other managers, to tell players, hey, you didn't make the team. And so it's this emotional roller coaster this time of year. And um, as much as, you know, we kind of want to just get there, get to opening day, these, these next three days are um, they have, have all the, all the makings of, you know, some life changing moments and some really sad moments for players in their careers. Now you haven't been doing a lot of baseball, but you've been rolling around doing a lot of hoops. I've hooping. Been yeah, we've been hooping. Uh, yeah, I had a lot of college basketball, had to finish some of that up for, uh, the Mountain West conference and, uh, also for the PAC 12 women. So that was fun to finish up the regular season and then got the opportunity for, um, women's empowerment month with the warriors to call an NBA game, which was really Really fun, fun to be a part of it, and uh, had a lot of really talented women working on that broadcast. So, uh, put on put on my NBA hat for you know a forty eight hour period in between spring training and getting ready for this exhibition game tonight. And now we're just all baseball. Our Mountain West did not fare well. Our Mountain West did, did not, not fare well. well. San Diego State last the, Aztec standing. The, the Aztecs <laughs> got us got us still in it, but it was like man. Yeah, you're it's hoping a for it. And six then, teams in. And then our six in. Even St. Mary's, our one of our local schools that's done no. Randy Bennett couldn't get it done. That's the thing about the tournament. Us small conference people, we want it to want it to happen so want bad it when happen. it doesn't happen. It's like a dagger. It is. It really was. I think the excitement of getting six teams in for the Mountain West, that's historic. Uh it was really cool. I mean, covering that conference all year, the the net rankings of these teams were like you know, there were eight of them in the top 40 at one point in yeah. time. Like they had such great non-conference showings and it wasn't because they scheduled soft. Like this was a year collectively that the Mountain West scheduled pretty tough. Um, you always have your softball, you know, type of games, but really did schedule outside of the conference very well. Um, and gosh, you go into Mountain West play, they all beat each other up, which we had a feeling was going to happen because uh, there was so much parity and good talent across the league, but six teams in and just two advancing and then just, San Diego State in the Sweet 16. Kind of brings a tear to your eye, but that's okay. Difference college hoop to doing an NBA game. So different. Yeah, the, the games are totally different. I mean, you, you get different styles in college basketball, right? You kind of have like your Air Force style uh, in terms of a slower offense. Um, you have your run and gun teams like we saw New Mexico pull away with if we just want to stick with Mountain West hoops. So the NBA is or like, you have like a team that can't shoot like my, <laughs> my alma mater, San Jose State. Hey, Tim Miles, you, my guy working it there. When you can't put the ball in the hoop, know, even though yeah. that's like the goal yeah. is to put the ball in the hoop. Yeah, they can't put they the ball in the hoop. Moments. They had their moments this year, Terrible. had their moments. Um, but I, I think in the NBA, like the gate, the, the body size, right? Alone, like you're just getting this like long, lean fast it's so fascinating if you've never been to an nba game like sitting as far down i mean courtside who can sit there who can afford that but sitting as far down as you possibly can like it's it's shocking to your system how large these dudes are you can watch the nba on tv <laughs> and be like ah oh, those guys are big in person you're like oh my god how does someone seven feet 200 and right. something pounds run and right. jump like right that. and now shoot threes they all shoot threes like yeah. the big big dudes they're not just sitting in the paint anymore like they have range in their game so i think specifically with the warriors like they are such a fast team and the game we had um they were playing the knicks who's such a physical team so it kind of uh slowed them down in a way a bit but yeah it's, it's definitely it's a different basketball type for sure between college and the nba so we're going to see you tonight. Tonight. NBC Sports California. And Dallas. I'm going to bring him along for the ride. He's still around? <laughs> yes. What did he ever do? We're still pumping that guy in that beard? Uh-huh. Yeah. We, like, do you know that every time we walk around, I have to just, like, be perfect all the time? Because he's perfect. He's you know? perfect? He's perfect. Through a perfect game. He's perfect. Well, it was one day. So the rest of the time, I'm not sure how perfect Dallas Parade is. Let's be honest. It'll be perfect we love Dallas, around Dallas. All right. So tonight, and then you're here for the first two weeks? Yeah, I'll be I'll be doing the first, I think, 13 right, games of the regular season. So I'll do the fir first homestand, the first road trip, and then um, Chris Carey will be here for the second homestand. That's the great thing about basketball is they just go up and down. It's there's no fill time. <laughs> a lot of action. A lot of action in like, basketball. Like a bad baseball game. It's like, hey, everybody, back in spring training. Well, let me tell you a story from 15 years ago. Back when my dad was a baseball coach. <laughs> yeah, yes, right. we've been here for three hours. 
you, those can creep up on you for sure. How about those uh, games in South Korea? I mean, we're talking about the, the pitch clock and everything getting shortened. I don't think the clock again. was on. I'm like, did it work there? Are we not taking that international? What's happening here? I mean, wow. that's. I remember when remember when the Red Sox and the Yankees went to London and they were playing like almost five hours. It's, it's like, crazy, come on, come right? On. Yeah. It's awful. Speed it up. Speed it up. Speed it up. <laughs> well, it's here. It's here. It's official. It's not Arizona. I know. This, it's, is, this feels good. It's the big ballpark. It's our old Coliseum. Have you, have you ever been here before? I have been here before. I've been here several times. I came. Uh, the first time I came was a fan with my brother. We met here. Uh, to come to a game. It was shortly after Dallas threw his perfect game and before I even knew Dallas. And uh, they were handing out the poster of the scorecard oh, of cool. his perfect game. So I do remember that uh, giveaway. And then um, I, I've been here you know, as a broadcaster with the Rockies. So yeah, it's been fun. Fam's coming out this weekend. Our son already has an A's jersey that he got last year when he came to see Dallas with my husband. So they're ready to rock and roll. We packed him up with all their green and gold, baby. Have you told people yet about how long you and the Bradens and yeah, I mean, we can, we can go through it, you know, if people want to just quickly, just, just you, 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 your, <laughs> yeah. your husband yeah, and husband Dallas, and grew, and up Dallas grew up together in Stockton. They played travel ball together. They've been good. You friends can't make this for a long time. I mean, you, really can't. you really can't. So uh, I met my husband through a, a baseball player through Will Venable, who used to play for the San Diego Padres, who's um, now an associate manager for the Texas Rangers. Uh, he and his wife, Catherine, um, introduced my husband and I. So we met through baseball. And uh, then shortly after I met my husband, Steve, he was introducing me to his friend, Dallas Braden, who was still playing for the Oakland A's at the time. And you're so sucked other, into so. Stockton. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Here's, yeah, yeah. Welcome to Stockton, California. <laughs> hey, 209ers. How you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Very familiar. Very familiar. So it'll be good. Yeah. Well, Great. have fun. Excited. Yeah. Ready to go. Ready to roll. Let's do this. Should be good. A little exhibition baseball. And remember, speed it up. Let's go. Let's <laughs> go. We do not want to be here three hours tonight. I think this is my favorite move, watching Cots at spring training, right, during the rain delay. It was like, and, and Bob Melvin, for that matter. I think they both, at one point in that game, were like, right? So yeah. it's the same thing, but it's like. The only it problem is Johnny and I are sitting there going, wait a minute, we're supposed to do the spring breakout game. I know. I will say that was a huge bummer right? about that rain because we, we've we been talking about this spring breakout game for a long time and how cool it is that Major League Baseball made this an initiative across both the uh, Cactus League and the Grapefruit League to make sure these young stars are on this big stage. And I was talking to Zach Geloff about it um, before that game. And I'm like, how cool would this have been for you to have that chance where now fans are getting to know your name, getting to know your style of play in this big game right under the lights kind of deal. Um, down in, in Arizona and Florida for those teams. He's like, oh, it would have been awesome. Like, I know these guys were pumped up about it because it says a lot of things. Number one, it says, hey, you're a top prospect. We've touted you as that. It's not just a number uh, in, on a list. It's we're going to go play this game and show everyone who our best people are on the team right now. And for fans to see that and try to get something to get excited about on all teams, right? Who's coming? Who's in the pipeline? Who's in the system? Who can you follow? Like, they didn't even get it. All hyped up, and they didn't get their game. Thunder, lightning. <laughs> See ya. Have a wonderful call tonight. Keep it moving. Historic. <laughs> yeah. It's historic. Exciting. Yeah, it's going to be a great season. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I know you guys have talked about it a lot here on A's Cast, but um, it's a team that has a lot of promise. We can't pump you up anymore. We, yeah, we've, do, we, we've, got, we, 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 we've done, we've done our job. Thing. I That's can't, it? we can't promote you anymore. That's it. We've done everything. Okay, we're out. Coming up next, <laughs> Shohei Otani and a bank account right here on A's Cast Live. This is Chris Towns, and there are two things that are a must for me, comfort and style. Whether I'm playing golf, going to dinner, I've got to have the right feel. That's why I've partnered with Link Soul, and you're going to love Link Soul. They have just released their new spring line, new fabrics for their polos, lightweight and perfect for technical performance. Link Soul also has new styles for their layers and hoodies with cool prints and seasonal colors. You know what they say in the big leagues, look good, play good. Go to linksoul.com. That's linksoul.com. This is Chris Townsend, and if you're looking for a great place to eat and watch games, go see my friends at the Chicken Pie Shop at Walnut Creek. The Chicken Pie Shop is one of the hottest restaurants in Walnut Creek. You're not going to find a better menu and come try their world-famous chicken pie that has been served in Southern California for 86 years. Spacious indoor and outdoor dining, perfect for your next private party or corporate event. Don't forget free parking. For more information, go to chickenpieshopwc.com. That's chickenpieshopwc.com.
A's first base coach Bobby Crosby was on A's Cast Live and explained why he believes the A's can surprise everyone in 2024. I think, uh, you know, I think Soderstrom with a fresh start is going to be awesome. I think Butler with a fresh start is going to be awesome. Geloff continue what he's going to do. We have a lot of interesting pieces and a lot of talent that once these guys feel maybe a little bit more comfortable with their feet wet, it could be really interesting. I think our pitching staff uh, is going to be really good. So, you know, I think we could surprise some people. I think, you know, I know how Koch manages. Uh, I know how he's respected. I know how he wants things done the right way. Uh, and I think these guys are going to feed off it. I think we're going to continue to grow and continue to get better. And I, I, I think we'll surprise people. I think it'll be really good. You can watch the full interview at youtube.com slash athletics or listen at athletics.com slash AceCast. Nestled in the hills of San Jose, minutes from Silicon Valley, Cinnabar Hills Golf Club offers 27 holes of championship golf, a first-class pro shop, practice facility, and great food in the grill. This time of year also means family and business get-togethers. Let the folks at Cinnabar Hills make your event unforgettable while enjoying their award-winning venue. It's all there for you, championship golf, a great space for any events, and incredible food. See it all at CinnabarHills.com. That's CinnabarHills.com. This is the place where you can dance like nobody's watching. Win like nobody's business. And get away like you mean it. So what are you waiting for? Come join the party. Take that evening out and make it a night you'll never forget. This kind of action can't be beat. Hey, Oakland A's fans, join your team this spring in Mesa. With nonstop flights direct from Oakland, there's never been a better time to head to the Southwest. Surrounded by this stunning Sonoran Desert, spring training fans know why Arizona is the perfect spring break escape. Miles of trails, shoreline, and sunshine combine for an unforgettable Arizona adventure. There's simply no shortage of things to do, see, and discover in Mesa. Get your visitor's guide at visitmesa.com. If you're looking for a new mattress, Nest Bedding has you covered. Sleep on the same mattress Hall of Famer Ricky Henderson sleeps on. Nest Bedding is the number one brand of online mattresses and the Bay Area's favorite mattress store. Take home the Easy Breather Pillow. The New York Times calls it their number one pick. You can navigate their easy news website, nestbedding.com. That's nestbedding.com. Green and Gold fans, use the coupon code Oakland and you get 10% off your entire order. Nest Bedding, love where you sleep. Looking to stay up to date on all things A's? Head over to athletics.com slash A's cast. That's athletics.com slash A's cast to listen to A's baseball in full 24-7 coverage of the A's, only on A's cast. With a single click, you can stream great shows, live pre- and post-game coverage, and of course, all the great action of the A's this season. Head to athletics.com slash A's cast today. Playwood, everybody. Streaming Play from Wood. Ricky Henderson Field, A's Cast Live continues with Chris Townsend. Oh, 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 this is gonna be such a good year. Just a little, uh, we call it off the cuff with Clay. Clay Wood, heads groundskeeper here at the Coliseum. Well, didn't you guys do that segment before with your old co-host in the mornings? Off the cuff with Huff or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, we're going back to our Terrestrial Radio days now. Speaking of the Giants, yes. Yes. Um, am I supposed to be shocked that Shohei Otani is denying everything now? I don't think so. I think we we saw that coming. Right? Uh, yeah, I I, I I I definitely saw that coming. Um, I was trying to find the uh... the best the best thing over the weekend, and I sent it to you. Was a Pete Rose baseball card. With Shohei Otani's face over Pete's, and the bottom of the baseball card said Shohei Rotani. No, 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 no. Pete Rotani. Yeah. Instead of Pete Rose, Pete Rotani. Listen, w- we went over this. The facts of the case, they have not changed. And I don't want to sound like I've watched a lot of legal things on TV before. 
But the facts have not changed. You can't bet with a bookie in the state of California, a bookie who the feds are looking at right now. And you can't, more importantly, pay off the bookie. And the facts are money came from a Shohei Otani account that paid off the bookie. And there seems to be evidence showing that it's from Shohei Otani. And the defense is going to be he knew nothing about it. And if this was a crime, he was scammed. But it's going to be it. baseball. And it's funny how the baseball media can just be so ignorant. They can all try and just walk away from this. And they tried for immediately tried to separate him from this. But once you really start to investigate and the people who started this investigation are not baseball people, right? So they're not going to care whether he was a baseball player or not. But there's just too many things that when you watch this from afar and you wonder when they're in, when they're in Korea, and everybody knows this, by the way. We talked with Daryl Hernays about this earlier, who Daryl Hernays will be coming up on the program. And he's made the squad. It's a great, it's one of the great stories. But here you had Shohei Otani, who clearly at this point, the Dodgers and Otani know what's going on. And yet Shohei and Epi, the, the interpreter, are super chummy in the dugout in Korea. Yes. He's already done a 90-minute conversation with ESPN. He spilt the beans, and the next day is changing his story. Clearly, Otani knows about all of this at this point. And if you knew a guy has just cheated you at a $4.5 million, and you're claiming you knew nothing about it, but at this point you now know about it, and you're seen on camera being like nothing's ever happened. The camera shows them chummy as ever, like nothing has ever happened. At this point in the timeline, Otani would know what what has happened. Yeah, exactly. And there, uh, the I was trying to look it up while you're talking. If there's any quotes out there from Otani, the Otani quote that Jeff Passan reposted from ESPN was, uh, uh, "Ipe has been stealing money from my account and has told lies." That's like the big quote that they, they tweeted out. And there's a the video of Shohei with the new interpreter during his prepared media statement. Today. Now, now here is your problem. You are now using a defense of I'm negligent of my own finances. That th- this is the defense. The interpreter went on with ESPN 90 minutes, spilled the beans the next day. Lawyers got involved and said, no, you got to change your story. And the very next day, he's changing his story. So one day, he has no problem telling you 90 minutes of what, what was going on to the next day changing the story and retracting everything he said. I mean, clearly, lawyers went, you're showing that Shohei Otani paid this off, which once again, whether you're helping your buddy out, whatever the scenario is, you can't pay a bookie in the state of California. Can't do it. Now, if this debt had been run up with like MGM Grand or the MGM company in Las Vegas or in Reno yeah. or a Caesars property, he could have paid it off and we wouldn't be talking about this. Well, it could have been anywhere. It could have been a sports book in Atlantic City because it's, it's but not you California. you can't do it in California. So the defense now that I don't know, well, that doesn't really work. If you don't pay your landlord your rent and you do the defense of I don't know, is he buying that? I've never tried it, but I'm going to say no. <laughs> if the bank who loaned you the money to buy your house, to buy your car, you just go, oh, my God, the person who handles my finances is my buddy or my interpreter, and he didn't pay you. And I, Are they going to go, oh, okay, cool. Uh, just get, get, get us next time. Oh, <laughs> yeah, cool. Get us on the next one. <laughs> the, the, the defense of I, I don't know my own finances is not a defense. They're your finances. This isn't a company. This is not I run a company and someone, someone swindled the money out of the company. That happens. 
And then you can obviously not know until you find out someone's been doing it. This is out of your own personal account. Your defense is, I never check my own money. I never check anything. I'm just completely clueless. Is not a defense anymore. Folks, yesterday, with dealing with stuff with my kids for college, I was checking a fund. That's part of a retirement slash college slash whatever. The minute I went to it, it wa- it sent me a code to my cell phone. I had to take the code from the cell phone. And I- you all bank too. You're just not transferring hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars. It's not as easy. It's just like the defense of we're just clueless does not work. That's what they're going to play. I'm not saying Otani gambled. I'm not saying that whatsoever. Is there still that possibility that this is, there's a closet dark side to show Otani? Sure. And they're going to do everything they can pr- to, to protect him. I mean, what was his name? Anderson. Greg Anderson? Greg Anderson. Greg Anderson would not testify against Barry Bonds. Would not. Would not. They threw him in jail multiple times. This guy, I mean... So is there that is there that remote possibility that Otani has gambled? Yes, it's it's there. But 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 if you're baseball, if we're just sticking from the baseball standpoint, because obviously the side from the authority side, they're going after this bookie. Obviously, illegal operations in the state of California, they're nailing this guy. But if you're baseball and you're gonna turn a blind eye to this. Are you setting the precedent of when stuff goes down that you can say, oh, well, I had no idea. I I had no idea. It's not a good look for baseball. Because that's I mean, just, I mean, it's because you're, you're basically you're going back into what we talked about the last time we were on the air, which would have been Friday. It is the having the fallback guy. You got a fall guy. You got a guy, you get in trouble, you blame that guy, he takes the fall, and you take care of that guy later on in life. You got a fall guy. That was the uh, great. Is that, is that what we're promoting in baseball is a fall guy? Because essentially by this came from your, once again, this is not from a company. This came from your own personal bank account. And if your only answer is, I never look at my bank account, I never look at anything, it's just I'm going to play stupid and act like I, I'm, I don't do anything that – adults do that's your defense is that i never look at my personal account why would i ever look at my personal account i don't handle my personal account well bro you're an adult yeah and this is coming out of your account your personal account the there's we found so much stuff out over the past like what 48 hours or so about oh by the way you're and, and, and if that really is what your stupidity doesn't make you innocent no not at all and because once again the money from his account illegally paid off a bookie. That fact never leaves us. Account from uh, his name is on the account. It's his money, and that money illegally paid a bookie. That fact never leaves. Whether he knew about it or not, that fact never leaves. Yeah, and we found out over the weekend that uh, Ipe never went to uh, UC Riverside, like he like he said. So there's a lie, and there that that came out. Then apparently he claimed he used to be the translator for. Uh, uh, Red Sox. Red Sox, but he did it for a player that came over, the lefty reliever, Okajima. He claimed he was a translator from the Red Sox. So like, yeah, no, he never worked for us. So there's a lot of stuff coming out about him right now that you're finding out. But, yeah, Otani not knowing about this, like we've talked about. I mean, you get an alert for everything. Anytime you get – I mean, how do you not – how do you not know this is happening? And then when it's $4.5 million, I think you're going to get alerted when something comes out of your bank economy. Yeah, this is multiple huge transfers. Yeah, and – I remember looking at the rule, like it's rule 21 in the, in the rule book. Yeah, I, I read the whole, I read the whole rule book over the weekend. You watch games back. I read the rule book. Yeah. I was... uh, if, if Otani was gambling, which we don't, we, he hasn't been found guilty, but if he was gambling illegally on other sports, he, I think the penalties, he can be suspended up for up to a year. Baseball doesn't want that. You can have a guy who's got, got a $700 million contract and making $65 million in endorsements be suspended for an entire year. So, this is gonna take. This is gonna. This is gonna drag out for a while until they find out what happens with in this whole situation. In my opinion, I know nothing. On Why this would it base- drag out for a while? Well, because baseball does probably doesn't want the news coming out if anything happens. But, but you got to remember, you got other people investigating this, and they don't care. Yeah, on the federal level, they don't care. <laughs> yeah. They don't. They the people, the authorities are trying to bust this guy. 
they're not they're not interested in Shohei's career. Their job is to bust this illegal bookmaker. Where obviously, if he got paid four point five, think of how big this guy's operation is. <laughs> right, this guy's house has been raided. He's been arrested. I mean, if he took four point five million in from Otani alone, what do you think he's getting from all these other people? So they're investigating this. And at some point, you're going to be like, we need to see your computer. We need to see your phone. We need to, we need to see all this stuff because his name's on it. And there's going to be a lot of different stories, but they, they need to investigate it because if you set the precedent of too big to fail, that's just that you're, you're, you're opening. How do you discipline other people? How do you, how do you, you know, we already went through a world of we're going to look the other way with PEDs. The fact. Right. And it's stained the hell out of the game. Well, you weren't testing. Oh, you weren't this. You weren't that. And next thing you know, you got guys hit Rafael Palmero up on Congress and Mark McGuire can't remember anything. And Sammy Sosa doesn't speak English anymore. And I mean, it's a bad look. Did you see when the- people start getting away with stuff? And you turn a blind eye, it ends up being a really bad look. Did you see that Sosa went back to Chicago and they interviewed him at the airport and they asked him about steroids and he like wanted no part of talking about it. He could have came clean, could have came clean and said it right there, but he didn't want to talk about it. And then you, you mentioned Palmero. I never took steroids, period. Yeah. So yeah, it's a, this is a- how did that work for so 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 not dealing with issues, not dealing with them head on. Gambling is something that it, it's it's so tough for baseball because they're now in the gambling world. They're now making money off gambling. You know, they they have a team that's essentially going to Vegas. I mean, their gambling is going is going to be sports and gambling are going hand in hand these days. But the way the state of California works, what happened is illegal. Yes. We're so what do you states. do about it? Yeah. And I as you mentioned, this is on a federal level. Like they're going to find this out in baseball. Will hopefully make a decision, you know, quickly, and not drag it out. So, what if you find out? Well, either way, even if Otani knew nothing about it, it, it's really, it's like, so you're just gonna nothing to see here based off really being infantile, and you can't even check your own bank accounts. Yeah, it, it's 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 unfortunate for us right now because we were busy trying to record. We were recording inter- or recording interviews. Yeah, we didn't so we, get to see. We didn't it. get a chance to see Otani's pre- prepared statement. So we've been kind of a loop. That's why I read that quote off that he said that Ipe's been telling lies and he's stolen money from me. Like that's the first thing I've seen because I haven't got a chance to see it. But yeah, this is you, you, gotta- know, you know what this means long term. If, if nothing happens to to, to Otani, you immediately become my fall guy. I, you, you, yeah. You're the fall guy. Yeah. I got kids. You don't have kids yet. So if I do something, I'm just going to act like he was doing it. I knew nothing about it. Well, let's wait until after your kids. When grad- the feds come, <laughs> when the feds come after me, you're taking the fall. That's got to have a fall. Guy. Chris Carter said it. Chris Carter, the Hall of Fame wide receiver, said, you got to have a fall guy. This will be the ultimate fall guy deal. And we played the audio the other day. He did say that to rookies. You got to have a fall guy. Got to have a fall guy. It just this is a stain for baseball, even if he didn't do anything, because you got the the number one guy in the sport who everyone loves and turns into why he's an international global superstar. And 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 being involved in something like this is just not what baseball wants. And they're trying to, you know, all this excitement coming off the Korea series with between the Dodgers and Padres and all that, you know, getting ready for the season. And now it's we're talking about Otani and a gambling scandal. Once again, this isn't fifty grand. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. This isn't fifty thousand. This isn't a hundred K. Hell, I'll give you two hundred K. It's four point five million dollars. You are that oh, he's just so focused on baseball. No, he's like a child. If you're a grown man and you have no idea, like no idea what your finances are in today's world. This isn't Elvis Presley and the Colonel back in the day, and no one could really check anything. Good this movie. is everything on your phone. Everything is in your computer, and your account, it was sent from your account, basically sent by you. It, so this guy was so close to you, and the bad look once again. He would have known about it. And they're still in the dugout, chummy bum, buddy, buddy. Yeah. This is not, I mean, 
at some point, common sense has to be here. And we're just going to accept that Shoei Otani's like a 14 year old and he can't handle any of his own finances. Yeah. And I, I can't expect, I mean, if that, that's even a bad look. Yeah, that's a bad defense. I don't know. If, I mean, what I'm trying to think of bad defenses all the time. I mean, you got the Twinkie defense and the uh, Harvey Mill case back in the, was it, 70s. There's been some bad defenses, but I mean, to, to say that you never look at your bank account, I mean, come on. You know nothing about your bank account. I mean, that's, I mean, your own just personal bank account. I know you deferred $680 million. And, ah, but, but, oh, his parents, you know, his parents, and all that. I mean, you know, you, you know, nobody. So then his parent, I mean, his parents don't know that 4.5 million is coming out. Whoever handles the account doesn't know 4.5 million is coming out of the account. Yeah. It's get- just all just, you can't buy it. We can't all be that stupid. Not everybody around Shoei Otani can be that ignorant and that stupid. Yeah, I agree. And what makes And us- you know what? I shouldn't even be mad about this, but it's, they're treating us. It's the old, we're going to be Barry Bonds defense. Barry Bond, I, I thought it was flaxseed oil. My ass, you thought it. I mean, that's just like the whole, come on, man. And now in 2024, can we really be something happened here? And, and not, I'm not against Shoei Otani. It's brilliant. Love watching him play. I don't want to see him suspended, but I don't want to. I, this can't be the answer. The, the answer just can't be um, this guy never looks at his finances at all. Not his company's finances, his personal finances, and uh, he, he's okay. And we'll just fire the interpreter, and he's a dirtbag, and, and 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 he had a gambling problem. And then you go, well, wait a minute. You guys weren't acting like this in Korea. I mean, you officially had to fire him in Korea, but he was still – you guys were all buddy-buddies with him in Korea. Look at the look at the videos in the dugout. Perfect example. Yeah, it just – this whole thing stinks, honestly. It stinks. And it's unfortunate. Like, if this was any other player, I mean, I don't think he gets as much cachet, much e- exposure. But since it's a global guy like Otani and he just signed that major deal, and the, the defense is what's really hurting a lot of the credibility in all this, it's going to carry on. I, I need to actually go and watch it or just read about what he said so we have more insight on it. But he didn't take questions after, which to me, that just irks me. I, maybe it's just because I'm a – old school media guy, I guess. I'm not new media as Draymond Green calls it. Uh, you, you're the you're the face of the sport and you're not going to take questions when something like this happens. Do you think LeBron James would go, I'm just going to prepare a statement and I'm out of here. Patrick yeah, he Mahomes. May. He may. But I mean, you, I mean, the guy... Politicians now do. Our president does it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, politicians do it all the time. I mean, just the idea that the guy does, doesn't want to get in front of it and just... They don't want to talk. They yeah. just whoop and they leave. And that's what he does. I mean, Otani never speaks to the media though. So that's the thing. Like he has... he, he that. You're now in, you're not in Anaheim anymore, as you said the other day. You're now in Los. You're actually a Dodger, and you're in Los Angeles. Like this is a major media market, and for you to not answer questions, that to me, it's just I don't. I, again, I'm, I'm I'm old school in this thinking, but I think he should have taken questions and answered. Yeah. I don't, interpreter and have to speak uh, through uh, a language barrier or not. How about this too? He's a very calculating person. He's a very private person. Does that sound like a person that would have no clue about anything going on in his life? Uh, yeah, not at all. Someone who's so guarded over their privacy, someone so guarded over their image. Once again, this isn't like Elvis and the Colonel. Elvis was not guarded. Elvis was a <laughs> hellraiser. Um, someone who's so guarded about their private life, someone who's so guarded about their image, so guarded about everything about themselves, but yet all of a sudden we now have to believe he's like worse than my teenagers with checking their finances. Yeah, uh, I mean, I mean, he's not a child. Yeah, this isn't an eighteen-year-old. How how old is he now? 28? 20, 28 or twenty-nine? I want to look this up. If he's, I mean, if he's, he could be going on twenty-nine, or he will be twenty-nine this year. I'll give our, I'll give our crack staff. A, you know, they're getting. We have new interns. They're getting used to it. You know, as time goes on, we'll be able to rely on them to look these things up. I don't since I don't have the computer in front of me like I normally do. He's gonna 20. be thirty in July. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. You have no clue what's happening with your own personal account and you're almost 30 years old. And you're that private, that worried about every little detail well, in your life. You're about you're worried about every single detail in your life but money. But everything else I I am I I am fiercely fiercely guarding every aspect of my life. Oh, but the money. 
Anybody can get into my account and do anything. Yeah, it's cra- it's crazy. It's, when we know that's not the case, we all have accounts. Well, it, when you mention it, like how private he is, we, we, we just found out that he has a wife. We never. We, we didn't know his dog's name, which is, I believe his dog's name is Decoy. I don't know how long he's been dating this woman, but he's been in our public life for how many years and no one even Six, knew. Six, right? 2018 was his first year? No, no. How long has he been dating her? Oh, he had no idea. I don't know. I don't know if that's public knowledge. No one even knows. Yeah. He is so guarded over the woman in his life. No one ever saw her. No one knew he was dating this woman. They showed her a couple times, I guess, during the, the games in Korea. I heard Carl Ravage talk about it. On well, she, she's now tonight. out. Yeah. It's his wife. Yeah. But before, no one knew about it. He was so guarded over That's what I'm saying. Someone with this type of personality, A-type personality, I don't know what you'd call it. There's no way that all of a sudden they're like, oh, the one thing in his life he knows zero about is actual cash. But yet, the original story was he was being honorable. He was taking care of his buddy. He was going to pay off his debts. That was the original story. One day later, 24 hours, it all flips to now it's a crime. The whole thing does not add up. Well, you know, you told me, you, you said um, you wanted me to be, you're going to make me your fall guy. I mean, at least yeah, I, you're going to be fall uh, guy. At least I pay off my, you know, I pay off my bet, the food bets. I mean, uh, correct. I, so I, at least I'm reliable in that aspect. Correct. I know some guys that, some guys were around all the time that still haven't paid you off on theirs, but we don't, yeah. we don't, we don't, we won't say names, but it might be on the radio tonight. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it goes back to what I, what I said, the human factor, it always comes into play. Like no matter what we think, no matter what we predict, we think this is going to happen. We think that's going to happen. It's the human factor, right? You just don't know. And here, you know, that's why if anybody up there listening in the broadcast booth, don't be bringing me the back of the baseball card. Uh, Did anybody have a back of the baseball card gambling scandal? (laughs) Anybody have that? Uh, Other than Pete Rose? I don't think so. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, Water Rodriguez is now start with a lattice starting on the IL. There's a lot of, there's a lot. I mean, there's so many guys out. I mean, it's the human factor. You just, we just it's, don't know. It's funny you mentioned that. DJ LeMayhu. The Yankees Starting already have the yeah. uh, Blue Jays closer Jordan Romano on the uh, on the injured list. There's, you got some guys that are injured that, um, the, especially for the Yankees. Oh, boy. Do you think they're panicking in the Bronx yet? They LeMayhew, should be. LeMayhew that's, why, that's why I say Mitch Spence has to be on this team. And I do believe he's going to be on this team. Because if you offer him back to the Yankees, they're going to say, yep, we'll take him back. Thank God. Yeah, they, they could use him. Um, and what we're seeing the injuries start piling up around the league. We saw with some of the guys today, like Andohar, we saw he was gonna be out for four to six weeks. He's having such a great spring, but he'll be back. And you know, but right now that opens up spots on the roster. And we mentioned Daryl Hernandez is now on the roster, which yeah. has been public. He's the youngest player to be on the A's. When are we gonna announce this so we can like celebrate? Uh, because I do I believe was... Lawrence Butler is gonna be, and La- Lawrence Butler is gonna be a tremendous friend of the program. We talked to him earlier. Well, you did. I I gave him a fist bump, and I, he asked me how I was. I was I was giving him advice where to live. True, yeah, yeah, because yeah, him and Daryl Hernandez was asking us where to live, and he we were like, uh, yeah, don't we we're like, don't don't live in South Bay's kind of far. So yeah, yeah they ask us where <laughs> we live. No, you do not want to. You do not want to live where we live. You know, you know, it's it, it's one of the cool things about doing this show is when you're doing the show, you see the power brokers walk by. The big league people who run this organization, the future of Major League Baseball. You don't get to see them, but the future of Major League Baseball is walking by us as we speak. That's the future of this game right here. Future of this team. Big golfer. Big golf guy. We talk golf in the office. Big golf. You know, I'm, big a, big, golf. I'm a big golf guy. So, uh, Getting back to Daryl Hernandez, what time – we, we're getting abused to our schedule again. We're back to like a regular schedule. I got pregame to do Yeah, today. we got about 20 minutes. What or- the heck am I doing in pregame? Daryl Hernandez. I almost had a panic attack. I'm like, I forgot my equipment, but no, we have equipment yeah. here. You know, you're going to need your equipment. <laughs> you're going to need your equipment tomorrow, though, You're at, at the uh, old road studio. We're going to fire that up. What? Pre-game tomorrow and you're oh uh, yeah Bay Bridge in San Francisco. We're gotta, not we, gotta, we 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 will not be in San Francisco. I gotta figure out where my it's cold room. here. You think you imagine it would be like there? 
I got to figure out where my road equipment is in my house. Uh, well, good thing you got 24 hours to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't put an air tag on. I need to put an air tag on that. Is it underneath my bed? I know if I hide it. Um, when, do, when do you want to get to Daryl? Uh, he's not that long, so we can, we can get to him now. Or What time are we off? 540. I, once I, I don't want people to think we're against Otani. It's just like, this is a big deal, right? You yeah. Have federal investigate like like you just don't like pay off four point five million in bookies and walk away like I had no idea. I mean, you just don't. Plus, you, you don't, don't do that. Plus, you know what? We're not going to come on and go. Oh well, hey, Otani's you know, like going off Otani, but uh, we really, you know, that's that's about it. But yeah, our job is not to defend him and be like it's so good for baseball. We don't want to hurt baseball. That's not that's not our job. It's not a two second thing. And we move on. Like we're going to break it down and tell you why it's fishy. Well, at least at least there's somebody there, like the L.A. Times, who's one of the last big papers to. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna get after it. Yeah, and and, and Tisha Thompson from ESPN has done a really good job covering it as well. I mean, think of all the papers that used to cover the Dodgers that are no longer around. Yeah, lots a lot of them, lots everywhere. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, what, basically we have the Chronicle and somewhat of what you call the Bay Area News Group. Yeah, sounds like Mercury News. Yeah, I only know about that because I see the shark stuff. When it comes to I, I pay for the group. online edition. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't get the paper. Oh, I, should, I should go to you for my sharks insight then. No. Get all my sharks articles. I, I was just, I, I could not believe after you took me downtown San Jose and then my wife wanted to go downtown San Jose. I couldn't believe watching all these grown men still wearing sharks. You call them sweaters. Correct. They are a sweater. No, they're a jersey. It's a sweater. It's a jersey. And we play in a barn. No, you play in a multi-million dollar arena. It's a barn. Now they're billion dollar arena. Well, I grew up playing on a pond, frozen pond. No, you it's grew your, up playing you're, in, you're a, in a billion dollar arena. I get it. You grew up on an ice rink. I grew up on a pond in the, fr- in the frozen tundras I, I, of Western PA. Our sweaters in our barns. <laughs> so stupid. Well, you're in last place. That's all I... What's up with these grown men wearing the sweaters of this last place? Joe Thornton is not walking through that door, and neither is Patrick Marlowe, Owen Nolan, you name it. Dan Boyle. Nabby's not coming back, all right? Uh, they, we'll get into, we don't have to get into it. But yeah, Urbe. Uh, Arches Urbe. One of, the, one of the original. Hell, the, the um, uh, Doug Wilson as Doug a player, Wilson. not as not as a GM, a player. Neither, ne, the, <laughs> Doug Wilson, the executive or player, is not coming back. <laughs> Daryl Sutter's not coming back. All right. Uh, Dean Link, Lombardi, Link Gates, <laughs> the original goon. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Enough of that. All right. Earlier today, <laughs> we, I've gotten to know Daryl a little bit, and uh, you know what's so funny is. These younger guys, this next generation of A's, are all guys that have watched A's cast live. Whatever level they are, these guys are watching. So shout out. We'll have to do that throughout the year. Hey, to all A's minor leaguers watching this show, shout out because they watch it. It's kind of cool. But we better get Fran to start to show it in the clubhouse and and uh but, but you remember, we have the pool for him to do that. You remember just veteran baseball players traditionally have just been hard to deal with jerks. Once you make money and you've made generational wealth yeah. and you, uh, these young kids are all into social media. These young kids, they get it. They get it more than any generation I've ever seen. Oh, absolutely. I mean, even my generation, because we're, we're millennials. Um, we're, we're some of the people. What is, what is Daryl Hernandez? He's 23. Gen, that be Gen Z, Gen Z, He's 22. A, he, he and law are, are they're Gen, Gen Z. Yeah. They're Gen Z. Yeah. They're, they're a different group coming up. They're like, want it there. They know about the show. They want to be on the show. You know how many years, how hard it was to drag guys to do any type of interview. You thought you were like trying to take their firstborn, <laughs> right? I'm like, bro, I need five minutes, and you're acting like it's the toughest thing you're ever going to have to do, and you make $20 million a year. These young guys, they're all in. Yeah, Gallif loves it. Noda loves it. They want to promote themselves. They want, I mean, they get uh, it. It's so much better. But with that that said, Daryl Hernandez, it's official. We knew it going into the interview. So when you watch the interview, we kind of dance around it, but we knew. But Daryl Hernandez is an Oakland athletic in 2024. Here's our interview from earlier today. We've been trying to track you down for Ace Cast Live for a while now. It's great to have you on. How are you, and uh, how does it feel getting here to Oakland? Feels good. Uh, it's a lot of fun. You know, lifelong dream to hopefully be here one day, and uh, you know, just 
Have fun. You know, we, we talk about that all the time with this club going into the season is that you have a lot of young guys. This is your dream. Your dream is to play big league baseball. And it's now hopefully you're going to be on the big club. But what is that like when you come here? It's the big ballpark and this is everything you've ever wanted. It's awesome. I mean, I didn't really know what to expect walking out on the field. And then today I walked out through the tunnel and I was like, it's a lot higher than we're not in Mesa thought, anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and there's an extra, extra deck. There's, yeah. you know, the park's a lot bigger than I thought. It's, uh, it feels like I'm MLB the show. That makes sense. So it, yeah. it was awesome. So exactly what was it like when you did walk on the grass? Cause the grass here, a lot of people feel, Clay Wood and his crew do the best job in all of baseball. Our, our playing surface is really immaculate. Just take us through, like, walking out. I know looking at the second deck, but the whole – just the emotions of, wow, I'm here. I, I can't even describe it, to be honest. It's, it was surreal, to be honest with you. I took a bunch of pictures on my phone, sent them to my mom and my dad, and I was like, this is, this is awesome. This is where I want to be. So it was awesome, I mean. And the surface, like you said, is awesome. And, all the guys told me this is the best it gets, so enjoy it because this is as good as it gets here. Now, if you are to make the club, which I think you are, we've been trying to promote you here on Ace Cast Live saying we think you've earned the right. Plus, when you start to look at the situation with Diaz, Lemus Diaz probably starting on the IL, well, only you and Nick Allen can play shortstop. You need to have two shortstops. So decision has not been made yet, but let's just say you do. We get our wish you're in the big leagues. Are the, is a family coming out for opening day? Yeah, they'll, they'll for sure come out. Um, so, I mean, hopefully that happens and it'll be a ton of fun. You know, it's my lifelong dream since I was five years old. And, you know, I just hopefully it happens. I know, and what I've been told is you're a guy that has a lot of confidence. Talk to us about the goals this spring. Did you accomplish what you accomplished, and do you think you've done enough? So, I mean, yeah, like you said, I have confidence. I feel like everybody needs to have confidence to play this game. It's so tough mentally. But, you know, just my dad playing pro ball, he's always talked to me since I was five years old about being so tough mentally because the game's going to beat you down naturally. So, um, I mean, you got to be – you know, I guess ahead of the curve and the better you are mentally, the more confidence you have, like the more of an advantage you have over certain guys. But I mean, yeah, it's just, that's right. no, go ahead. You're, you're just being comfortable and, yeah. and being able to be accomplish your goals. Yeah. So uh, talking about spring, uh, I feel like I had a decent spring. I could have definitely done some things better, but uh, I worked as hard as I could every day. I got in the weight room, uh, got my extra defense work, worked really hard with Emar. Felt like a lot better defensively and, uh, you know, just was grinding in every part of my game to hopefully make the opening day roster. So, yeah, I'm happy with it. He's not lying because I went down onto the field to find him for this interview and had to grab him saying, hey, we want to have you on. He was already before the Bay Bridge series down on the field with Eric Martins working on his craft. So I could tell you definitely working hard. The ability to be versatile to be able to play multiple infield positions. You're a good enough athlete. I'm sure if I said go play left field, you can make it happen. Talk about at a young age, obviously later on you want to be an everyday shortstop, but just talk about your ability to play third short to have that versatility. Yeah, I feel like that was uh, something that I always wanted to have and uh, played shortstop for the most part growing up, but I got drafted by the Baltimore Orioles mm -hmm. and we had a lot of you know really good prospects, including Gunnar Henderson, Jordan Westbrook. So. We kind of had they pr uh, prioritized um, versatility, playing second, third, and short for all of us. So I feel like that really helped me out. And now in camp, I get to kind of showcase those skills a little bit more. No doubt. And you know, when I I think about you going forward, when Cole Irvin, who obviously was a fan favorite, we loved having him on the show. When we traded Cole Irvin to Baltimore for you, a lot of people were excited. And I got to think for you, as you mentioned, all those top prospects that were there in Baltimore, when you got here, did you get the feeling, as we like to say, this is the land of opportunity. When you, when you got here, did you think, man, I'm going to have a real shot to get to the big leagues? Uh, yeah, I would say so. I mean, everything, you got to earn it and you got to work for it. So it's not just handed out. But definitely I, I felt some opportunity and uh, I wanted to work as hard as I could, really. I can't control the results, but work as hard as I could see what would happen and then and you know, I'm here now hopefully I, I get to make this team but yeah definitely Baltimore has a stack system they've been number one for a while and um, 
you know, rankings, but yeah, I feel like this up and coming group is really good. I think not enough people are talking about that. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize when you talk about young athletes, you got a lot of hungry guys with a yeah. chip on their shoulder. I know a lot of guys you're excited about starting the season. Oh yeah, I think our locker room vibe is like, kind of like quiet but very confident, honestly. And I like that. I think everybody's hungry, kind of ready to prove something. Everybody has their different motivations, whether you're older or younger. So kind of just chip on your shoulder, kind of go prove it. Let's end on this. If you do make the opening roster, have you thought about yet what it will be like? All the bunting, opening day, it's going to be against the Guardians. Have you thought about what it will be like? I have not. I'm trying to live in the moment, but, I mean, it's something I've dreamed about. So I've always, I guess, thought of what it would feel like. But I'm sure if I end up feeling it, it will, it will you know, be surreal for me. And I don't know what I'll feel. We'll see. He is the he is the future, but he's also the now going to be a big part of this season. We appreciate you stopping by. I expect to have you on a lot in the next coming years and to watch your career go. But thank you for coming on for the first time and good luck in the 2024 season. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, Oakland A's fans, join your team this spring in Mesa. With nonstop flights direct from Oakland, there's never been a better time to head to the Southwest. Surrounded by this stunning Sonoran Desert, spring training fans know why Arizona is the perfect spring break escape. Miles of trails, shoreline, and sunshine combine for an unforgettable Arizona adventure. There's simply no shortage of things to do, see, and discover in Mesa. Get your visitor's guide at visitmesa.com. This is Chris Towns, and there are two things that are a must for me, comfort and style. Whether I'm playing golf, going to dinner, I've got to have the right feel. That's why I've partnered with Link Soul, and you're going to love Link Soul. They have just released their new spring line, new fabrics for their polos, lightweight and perfect for technical performance. Link Soul also has new styles for their layers and hoodies with cool prints and seasonal colors. You know what they say in the big leagues, look good, play good. Go to LinkSoul.com. That's LinkSoul.com. A's manager Mark Kotze was on A's cast live at the winter meetings and discussed the culture being built by the young A's. I think we do have a collection of talent um, that they that the A's fans saw come together really in August and September. You know, if you look at the first half of the year, you know, we were staring at history. Zach Geloff showed up and a couple others kind of changed the culture. The, the next group that came, the, the Soderstrom Butler group, kind of recognized how difficult the big leagues really are. I think the culture that was built in September amongst this young group is going to continue forward in spring training. They're going to continue to challenge each other. They're going to continue to hold each other accountable, which is uh, is all the right things um, to build going forward for you know winning ball club. You can watch the full interview at youtube.com slash athletics or listen at athletics.com slash A's cast. If you're looking for a great place to eat and watch games, go see our friends at the Chicken Pie Shop of Walnut Creek. The Chicken Pie Shop is one of the hottest restaurants in Walnut Creek. You're not going to find a better menu and come try the world-famous chicken pie that has been served in Southern California for 86 years. Spacious indoor and outdoor dining, perfect for your next private party or corporate event. Don't forget free parking. For more information, go to chickenpieshopwc.com. That's chickenpieshopwc.com. Unlock offers and receive exclusive in-game features by downloading the MLB Ballpark app for iPhone and Android today. Plus, get the latest information on game times, schedules, and more. This is the place where you can dance like nobody's watching. Win like nobody's business. And get away like you mean. So what are you waiting for? Come join the party. Take that evening out and make it a night you'll never forget. This kind of action can't be beat. Nestled in the hills of San Jose, minutes from Silicon Valley, Cinnabar Hills Golf Club offers 27 holes of championship golf, a first-class pro shop, practice facility, and great food in the grill. This time of year also means family and business get-togethers. Let the folks at Cinnabar Hills make your event unforgettable while enjoying their award-winning venue. 
It's all there for you. Championship golf, a great space for any events, and incredible food. See it all at CinnabarHills.com. That's CinnabarHills.com. Like sports, business is about winning. Championship decisions are business decisions based on what it takes to help your company win. And that's why there's UBO Business Services, specializing in helping you win every day by streamlining workflows, managing documents, and providing the best-in-class office technology. Make your championship decision with UBO Business Services. Visit them at ubeo.com. That's ubeo.com. And the underdog Oakland Athletics win their first championship since they were in Philadelphia in 1930. Hi, I'm Raleigh Fingers, Hall of Famer, three-time World Series champion with the Oakland A's and World Series MVP. Winning takes teamwork, skill, and heart. So when you need an ace for a personal injury lawyer that will win you the game, go with the winning team. Call Venardi Zarata at 833-VZ for me or go to vzlawfirm.com. Bernardi Serrata, the official injury law firm of the Oakland A's. If you're looking for a new mattress, Nest Bedding has you covered. Sleep on the same mattress Hall of Famer Ricky Henderson sleeps on. Nest Bedding is the number one brand of online mattresses and the Bay Area's favorite mattress store. Take home the Easy Breather Pillow. The New York Times calls it their number one pick. You can navigate their easy use website, nestbedding.com. That's Nest betting.com green and gold fans use the coupon code oakland and you get 10 percent off your entire order nest betting love where you sleep you're listening to a's cast live here's chris townsend I had a lot of fun with that interview he's special i'm excited to see him we bet you he's going to be on the roster. Youngest player to make the opening day roster since fan favorite Brett Anderson. <laughs> Brett Anderson? Yeah, fan favorite. You said Brett Anderson? Yeah. Fa- fan favorite? <laughs> yeah, he is – Um, he's like the perfect th- fit, too, right now. You need somebody that can play – because Geloff is your second baseman. You're going to give it a ride with Nick Allen at short, and he's probably going to play a lot of third base, but he can play short. Yeah. Super he's super athletic. Everybody has loved him since he's come over from Baltimore. He's shown he can hit a little bit. It's like, all right, you know, part of the part of the future is now. Yeah, and he mentioned in that interview that he they uh, the Orioles taught them to play multiple positions, which is I think awesome the versatility to be able totally. to teaching you know players to be, be able to play multiple positions. That's why guys like Gunnar Henderson doesn't really have a defined position, but he made it to the major leagues. And Jackson Holiday is going to come up. He's probably going to play short though, so that's okay. And Jordan Westbrook, who Daryl mentioned in there, they have guys that play multiple positions all over, and that's kind of way the game's going. And that's why it's great to have someone like him, a guy that who we don't know is going to be on the roster or not, but had a great spring. Hoy Park plays multiple positions. Like it's the name of the game anymore. Hoy Park is like the greatest fantasy player when it comes to you realize he's played third short in the big leagues. Cause remember that was our problem looking around the roster, trying to decide who's played shortstop other than Nick Allen. Yeah. And park has played third, short, second center, right and left. He's played basically everywhere in the big leagues. I'm not saying he's winning a gold glove at any of them, but if you put him there, he's actually played in the major leagues at that position. He's the super utility guy. He's Ben Zobrist. He's, uh, there's been a couple other guys, but I think it's Zobrist. I think of super utility guys. But yeah, he's a, it's a viable Jose player to have. Jose Akendo, who played all nine positions. Uh, uh, they, what do they call him? The secret weapon was his nickname. The old Cardinal. He's a bench coach. I yeah, mean, he's he, now the third base coach, right? He was. Or is he I out? don't know if he's still there with Ollie. By the way, he didn't even bring it up. Uh, Ollie Marmol got a contract extension somehow. What? I thought they didn't like it, but apparently we were wrong. When they when they did breaking news out of Cardinals camp on MLB Network, I just sat there and went, "What? That is essentially you're you're the yes man. You do what the front office wants. John Mazalak, you're doing exactly what he wants. And if the team gets out to a bad start, there's no way." The rumblings are going to be, oh, he's going to get fired. That's essentially what this was. This was a contract. And, it, you know, we talk about, you know, certain managers are just puppets. 
this is a great example of a guy that they wanted to make sure that if they get out to a bad start, they're not going to have the, the calling for a guy's head. He does what you want. He does exactly what you want. So you gave him a contract extension, even though he hasn't, I mean, he's gotten his team to the postseason, but they got ran out real quick. And then the next year was an absolute mess of a season. Yeah. And, and you're getting a contract extension. And you're and they're banking on guys like Sonny Gray, who's hurt, Lance Lynn, who's he's still okay, gives up a lot of home runs, but that, that's fine. If a lot of them probably solo home runs. But they're banking a lot of older pitchers and older players of either guy and a division and they're guys in a division where every team, the Reds, the Cubs are young, the Pirates are young, the the Brewers are young ish. And then you have the the Cardinals who are old and you're banking on the as Mike Farron said earlier, our good friend on Power Alley, back of the baseball card when oh. it comes to Arnado and Goldschmidt. Oh God! And uh, the old back of the baseball card. You know, wait a minute. You know what? How we've had well over twenty thousand people play Major League Baseball. Uh, yes. How many guys really could you look at the back of the baseball card and see great consistency for a long time, year after year? Okay. How many, how many, how many players? It's a super small percentage. Correct. For the amount as we use that bad saying, it's very, very small. Yes. And I want to, I want to mention this before we get out. Um, we, what we got to do in the next day, we, tomorrow and, and then or on the opening day, uh, we haven't done the pro as most pressure. I think we can add a Tawny to that list. <laughs> <laughs> Show a Otani season. Has changed dramatically. We can do our and also expectations. Yeah, I was going to say in our pr- predictions. What, what What are the ex? And I think we should maybe send a text around to some like we like some of it, like I want to know what Martin Gallegos is that expect. I want to know what everybody's expectations are for the season. Yeah, for sure. And then I could, I could do what we did last year, where we sent around the uh, who's going to lead the team in homers, walk or home runs, WAR saves, K uh, wins, and whatever the other one was, soul bases, which everyone's going to put Ruiz. And see what everyone picks up because we were all pretty bad <laughs> with it last year, except for stolen bases because we they all went won shock. fifty games. Yeah, so none of us had Brent Rooker leading the team in home runs. So no, I, I, I'm not taking. By the way, I'm, I got a guy I'm taking this year for home runs. I, Who? It's kind of chalk, but it's Who? okay. No, it's not Rooker. Who? Shay Langoliers. That's not bad. I would not say that's chalk. Well, if, if, in, in our bubble, it is because we know how many home runs they left. Well, I, in the I, national media, they had no idea how many. Home I, runs. I, I said last year I could see him at the end of last year. I was like, I could see him hitting 25 plus. Yeah. If he got hot, I could see him hitting 30. Yeah. He's projected somewhere in that, I think, that 23 to 25. He hit 23 last year in that, that range right there. So, well, and, and, Andujar would have been an interesting pick. Yeah, yes. Uh, he would have. He You're not going to take Soderstrom? That was your pick last year. Is hey, that my pick last year? Yeah. Did I pick that? Homers and war. It sounded so good, Dad. <laughs> it sounded like, oh, boy, this is going to be – he's going to come up and just rake. I can't wait to see who Johnny picks. That's my. That's mine. Johnny. You well, know. you got to come up with that tonight to give it. Tonight during this game, I, we need a mass, tech, mass text. Ray the Ninja needs to be on it. Get Martin Gallegos on yeah, it. Our broadcasters. Yeah, that's what I did last year. But I'll, I'll include Martin this year. Part and I want to know yeah, who who's going to lead the team in all those categories. JJ Blade. Martin, uh, we'll see Martin on Thursday. So but I'll, I'll text him tonight and get it. And when it says stolen bases, any cannot put Ruiz. Yeah. Who's going to be second? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Is that it? That's it. Yeah. When's pregame? Six. Six? Yeah. You want me to get out now? Well, I want to make sure we have enough time to get out of here. Okay. All right. Uh, first show in the books. Not Cactus League edition, Bay Bridge. Tomorrow we're back at 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock, yeah. Team will be on over uh, against the Giants in San Francisco starting Correct. at 5 o'clock. So pregame This at game starts at what time? 4, 420. Uh, this game starts at 640, so it's like a regular season game. All right, 640 start time. Everybody, thank you for listening. We want to thank Brian Price, the pitching coach of the San Francisco Giants. We want to thank Ross Stripling for stopping by. Jenny Kavnar, who will be on tonight, NBC Sports California, and the newest day, Daryl Hernays. Thank you for watching A's Cast Live from the Field. We'll see everybody tomorrow at 3 o'clock.
Hey, Oakland A's fans, join your team this spring in Mesa. With nonstop flights direct from Oakland, there's never been a better time to head to the Southwest. Surrounded by this stunning Sonoran Desert, spring training fans know why Arizona is the perfect spring break escape. Miles of trails, shoreline, and sunshine combine for an unforgettable Arizona adventure. There's simply no shortage of things to do, see, and discover in Mesa. Get your visitor's guide at visitmesa.com. This is the place where you can dance like nobody's watching. Win like nobody's business. And get away like you mean. So what are you waiting for? Come join the party. Take that evening out and make it a night you'll never forget. This kind of action can't be beat. This is Chris Towns, and there are two things that are a must for me, comfort and style. Whether I'm playing golf, going to dinner, I've got to have the right feel. That's why I've partnered with Link Soul, and you're going to love Link Soul. They have just released their new spring line, new fabrics for their polos, lightweight and perfect for technical performance. Link Soul also has new styles for their layers and hoodies with cool prints and seasonal colors. You know what they say in the big leagues, look good, play good. Go to LinkSoul.com. That's LinkSoul.com. If you're looking for a new mattress, Nest Bedding has you covered. Sleep on the same mattress Hall of Famer Ricky Henderson sleeps on. Nest Bedding is the number one brand of online mattresses and the Bay Area's favorite mattress store. Take home the Easy Breather Pillow. The New York Times calls it their number one pick. You can navigate their easy news website, nestbedding.com. That's nestbedding.com. Green and Gold fans, use the coupon code Oakland and you get 10% off your entire order. Nest Bedding, love where you sleep. And outdoor dining. Nestled in the hills of San Jose, minutes from Silicon Valley, Cinnabar Hills Golf Club offers 27 holes of championship golf, a first class pro shop, practice facility, and great food in the grill. This time of year also means family and business get togethers. Let the folks at Cinnabar Hills make your event unforgettable while enjoying their award winning venue. It's all there for you championship golf, a great space for any events, and incredible food. See it all at CinnabarHills.com. That's CinnabarHills.com. And the underdogs, Oakland Athletics, with.